O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Not Tom O'Brien, Jacob Shoup. Happy to be with you all. Uh, give us a call. Send me an email, jacob at tfnn.com. Uh, let's first look at uh, the end of the bear market. Apparently, this is the largest, excuse me, the longest bear market uh, since the 1940s. Um, so we've spoken about these are major companies that are driving this, right? And we have jobless claims increasing. Uh, so, so what's going on? Why, why is this the case? And I came across this interesting chart. Um, and this looks at basically Morgan Stanley's equity index um, and then excess liquidity. And this is a pretty good indicator of uh, future performance on the MSCI. And so the idea is there's still a ton of excess liquidity. Um, it started to rise from depressed levels as inflation and growth are falling, and that frees up the asset supporting liquidity. And there is just, as I've said, there's just a lot of money going around here. So it'll be interesting how it comes. I mean, there really is like this divergence, right, in the general kind of economy uh, versus how the market's performing. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how that kind of fleshes with each other, excuse me, fleshes with each other. So, all right, one of the things I wanted to speak about today, we spoke a little bit about uh, Kathy Woods buying Coinbase the other day after um, news came out that the SEC was pursuing them in, in Binance as well. But she also purchased today uh, a bunch of shares of uh, Block. And if you remember from, I think probably about a month and a half ago, maybe a little bit uh, over, Hindenburg uh, released that article. What I said at the time is that, okay, so there might be some issues, right, regarding Block's uh, reporting of unique accounts, when in reality, they're probably accounts uh, operated by the same person, okay? So you have, like, doubling, essentially. But one of the other things that Hindenburg really hinged on was uh, it being used for, like, illicit purposes, I, I guess, certain kind of black market activities. Uh, but I don't think investors gen generally care about that kind of stuff, and this is really what I expected to see. It really crashed down below this level, uh, kind of after those reports here, um, kind of moved back down. And Kathy Woods, I think, has a positive outlook on it. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if we can get back to that, you know, 75 level. Uh, but, you know, Kathy, if you're listening, please call in and uh, tell me your thought process on, on everything you're doing, because it's super interesting, right? Binance, some more stuff going on. Uh, S, the SEC said that uh, CZ, which is the uh, CEO, Cheng Peng Zhao, said that he uh, redirected $12 billion um, in funds, okay? And so CZ responding to that, right? And there really is this kind of big, you know, uh, extended kind of conflict, right, with, with the SEC and uh, these, these crypto brokerage firms. Uh, and CZ says that's not even possible because we only had, at max, to his knowledge, two billion uh, in in user funds. So how could he switch? Uh, excuse me, redirect twelve billion? It's going to be really interesting to see. I've seen CZ speak, and he's the CEO of Binance, and he's a pretty sharp guy, um, and he always comes prepared. Um, I'm sure we'll have some kind of hearings about this in the future, and that will be something super important to watch. But again. Um, Going back to Coinbase, you know, Kathy Woods purchased $21 million, um, so, and she's still sticking with that $1 million valuation for Bitcoin, which is, you know, a pretty big off of what we're at currently. So, Palantir. Again, we were speaking about a little while ago. Um, all the big AI people, they signed a paper, right, the AI developers, uh, that we need to put a halt on... AI development, just until we can develop kind of a framework of how we're going to do it and, and make sure that the impact on the economy and, and really to the human condition is not so extreme. Well, Alex Karp, and he always has something fun to say, uh, he says that this is occurring uh, because they don't have any product ready, which I think you know, the market liked a little bit. Um, Palantir essentially is going to start providing AI to the military, um, if, and they are already. Uh, but this is going to just get far, far more complex. And I, I was trying to find it for you guys, but I, I just couldn't locate it online, uh, or excuse me, on YouTube. Uh, but it was this uh, kind of mock battle that they were doing, the military, and they were using, uh, you know, drone footage and connecting it up to an AI, gave the AI the kind of information um, of, of 
force size, what the capabilities are of the uh, attacking force, which was supposed to represent uh, the U.S. And the AI came out with three or four plans of how they were going to go ahead and approach um, this certain target. And it was just really insane to watch, right? I mean, this is <laughs> going to really change how things are how things are done. I was talking to Bestford about it a little bit, and we just both agreed it is just a pretty insane kind of deal. So looking a little bit here, and going back, that letter uh, with Tesla CEO, um, and obviously Steve Wozniak, and a bunch of other really um, prominent and impactful uh, tech figures, you know, signed this, only over 31,000 signatures. Um, Carp said, uh, people who have nothing to offer want to study AI, uh, but by taking a pause, this could lead to adversaries stealing a lead and not only commercial applications, uh, but also military applications. Uh, it says to him, studying this and allowing other people to win both on commercial areas and on the battlefield, battlefield is a, quote, really bad strategy, right? And this puts us as a society, you know, in a pretty difficult spot. I don't think that analysis is, is really wrong, right? And he likens it essentially to the Cold War arms race, which I also think is probably a pretty, like, apt parallel, right? Um, so it'll be interesting to see which way we take it. Because certainly um, other entities and countries uh, that are investigating this are, are not going to agree, or at least the chance is pretty low that they would agree to also halt uh, AI development. So Palantir's angle is like, no, let's just chug full force ahead. And we'll see, this will probably be decent um, uh, for, for their equity, but uh, you know, we'll wait to see. So, Tesla, which is really pumping us up today, and we're about to go on break, so we'll get back to it. But uh, GM is going to use their charging network, uh, and that's going to join Ford in leveraging the EV leader's tech, and this is huge. One of the things, and again, we'll talk a little bit more about it when we get back, but, uh, you know, when, when the pot stocks were popping, everyone wanted to get in. Everything was so inflated price-wise anyways, at least regarding those, you know, the value of that equity, of those equities. Um, and the goal is, is you want to get into things that are kind of related, right? But you don't want to get uh, so into it. So looking at these kind of sub, not subsidiaries, but kind of like secondary companies that will help prop up the EV market. Obviously, Tesla's taking it, right, with the charging stations, but it'd be interesting to look in the uh, market in general for uh, things that aren't directly related regarding production of EVs, um, but help support them. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back.